Hey, I'm Brendan, aka Slither. I'm a GM on Syndom, a free multiplayer text-based cyberpunk role-playing game that you can play anywhere. You can find us at syndom.org, that's S-I-N-D-O-M-E dot O-R-G. I'm also a LARPer and a tabletop gamer. Gamer. Uh, this video series is geared toward helping you develop your roleplay skills. Each video is, for the most part, a self-contained lesson that plays into the overarching goal of helping you roleplay better. Uh, these videos are intended to be useful to you if you roleplay online, at the table, or in real life. Now, on to this video's topic. The world is full of people, even if you don't see them. Uh, so, what do I mean by that? If you're playing a tabletop game, your GM's job is to describe the world around you. But they might not be the best at it, they might overlook it at certain times, or they might be waiting on cues from you, the player, to help them describe it. If you're playing in an online game, uh, the world may be described to you either visually or textually. Um, and if you are just role-playing in a forum or something like that, then it's really up to you, the player, and the other players involved or GMs involved to describe the world around you. Um, most of the time, it doesn't matter where you're doing your role-play you can create or add to immersive scenes by remembering that an entire world exists around you. It can be hard if you don't actually see the hustling bustle of the people in the city, or the animals rustling through the forest, or the inhabitants of the airship your character is flying on. Excuse me. But they're there. Uh, they're there all around you. There's leaves on the ground, there's birds in the trees, there's uh, stop, cat. There's a, a whole vibrant world just waiting for you to describe it and interact with it. Uh, so why is remembering that a whole world of people and things exists around your character important? Well, it adds flavor to your roleplay. You can interact with the things around you. You can interact with the ambient people around you. And by ambient, I mean people that the GM didn't explicitly describe or that aren't explicitly in the room like if you're in a crowded bar. Uh, the GM might not describe every single character to you, or the game itself might not present you with 50 different characters to interact with, but you can assume it's there, either from the description of the room that you were given, or the visualization of the room uh, in, a, in an MMO or something like that. So it adds flavor to your roleplay. You can interact with things around you, and the ambient people around you. It adds realism to your actions. So if you're in a crowded bar and a friend walks in, maybe you don't see them right away, right? Because you're in a crowded bar. Make them work for it, make them come find you, you know? And if you do happen to see them, raise your hand. Don't just, you know, start talking to them right away, expecting that they're gonna hear you across the room if they've just walked in the door. Um, if you're on a crowded street and a pickpocket is lifting purses, Maybe you don't see them right away. Maybe you don't notice when they pickpocket you right away, and a chase has to ensue. Um, it can explain consequences. So if you just walk around a world and, and believe that there's no one around you that uh, could possibly see the things you're doing because they're, the GM didn't describe anyone or the game didn't show anyone, um, well, if you pick a pocket and somebody knows you did it, and you're surprised by that, is that good for the game? Um, it, it, so again, consequences. There, there, there are people all around you all the time in most of these worlds, unless you're playing some kind of fantasy game and you're in the middle of a, a forest and you can kind of reasonably expect that there's no one there. Um, try to include ambient people and actions and objects in your roleplay. Um, you're telling a story your character story. But that story is part of a larger one told collaboratively with others. Don't just add to your own story. Add to the general collaboration. So think about how a, a writer describes a scene in a book. If the characters in the book completely ignore the world around them and, and just assume there's going to be no consequences to their actions and that nobody in this world might stop them from doing whatever they're doing, is that going to help your immersion in the story, or hurt it? Probably hurt it. Um, so maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm great at including the world 
around me or my character in my role play. And I always take it into account. And it's second nature to me, um, but I'm role playing with some people that aren't so good at it. What can I do? Well, handle it in character, right? So make your, make your characters purposefully point to objects and people in the world. Um, have them consistently interact with the world around them. Set the standard. You know, uh, and just like you say, your character's walking out of a bar. Have them step over a, a drunk character or a drunk person, just an ambient person. There's a bum sleeping by the door, and you have to step over them. Um, there's there's puke on the floor, and you've got to avoid it. There's a huge line at the bar, and you've got to wait in line for your drink. These are all ways that you can include the world around you in your role play and have it dictate your character's actions, both to add to your immersion and the immersion of the people that you're playing with. And if you do that and you set that bar high, chances are other characters, whether consciously or unconsciously, are going to appreciate what you're adding to the scene and want to do it themselves and probably start doing it. And if worse comes to worst, you can always raise it as an issue out of character. Um, but really, more likely than not, if you're consistently including the world around you, its people, its objects, into your role play, you'll set the bar high enough that others will strive to catch up. And that's it. Uh, don't forget to like or subscribe if you're into this video and this video series. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or, or comments, I guess. Feel free to leave it down below. Thanks.